Put simply, a hypernova is insanely powerful. Defined as a stellar explosion that ejects incredible magnitudes of matter, it is easily one of the most potent blasts known to the universe. However, despite how fascinating they are, there is still a lot more people don't know about these superb stellar spectacles. So today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 freaky facts about hypernovas on this episode of Super Freaky Science. To stay updated on our most recent videos, don't forget to subscribe. Although they may be commonly confused, a hypernova and a supernova are not the same things. With a supernova, there's an explosion that results in a star being left in the center, with this star typically being a neutron star. However, in a hypernova, the burst is so intense that the star disintegrates completely. It should also be noted that supernovas are much more common than hypernovas, with supernovas occurring at the end of many stars' life. In contrast, a hypernova will only occur in stars with a mass of about 30 times greater than our sun. Yet in both cases, these novas are ultimately the result of a star running out of fuel and dying. A gamma ray burst, or GRB, typically occurs after the formation of a hypernova, and although exactly how they are formed is not yet known, what we do know is that the GRB forms two polar opposite pieces of matter known as jets. These jets then shoot out from each end of the star, creating a laser that lets off gamma ray bursts. NASA estimates that there are hundreds if not thousands of GRBs that occur every single day. However, we typically don't see them because they're only visible when they are pointed directly at Earth. In addition to this, based on NASA's observations, not every hypernova has had a GRB. As a result, scientists still find it difficult to fully understand the relationship between hypernovas and gamma ray bursts. Believe it or not, the first time a hypernova was mentioned in astronomical literature was in 1982, when it was hypothesized that a core collapsed supernova could be much stronger than originally thought. However, the first time astronomers were able to actually witness a hypernova was much more recent as we'll see. Now the distinguishing factor between a hypernova and a supernova is that the former usually refers to a core collapsed supernova about 5 to 10 or sometimes 100 times brighter than a supernova. Over time though, as our understanding of the differences between the supernova and the hypernova have developed, it has become more accurate to use the term to describe core collapsing supernovas that emit GRBs. While we already mentioned that hypernovas are rare, they are far from a once in a lifetime experience. That's because the chance of seeing one in your lifetime is slim to none, with one occurring in the Milky Way galaxy only once every one million years. As a result, the only viable way for astronomers to study hypernovas is to look to different galaxies. As of now, a galaxy located about 25 million light years away from us has been the object of intense study due to it being the location of a relatively large hypernova. And while it is near impossible for scientists to witness one directly, by studying the hypernova's early remnants, we can get more information about these enormous explosions. And although this type of research may seem a little bit tedious for scientists, we should be thankful because after all, if they are widespread enough to research more easily, that might be a threat to our existence. The first hypernova was discovered in a joint study by Northwestern University and the University of Illinois and was published by Northwestern on April 13, 1999. However, they did not actually observe a hypernova directly. Instead, they were able to find the first remnants of one. The hypernovas discovered were in galaxy M101, or better known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, thanks to its spiral shape. Dr. Wang, one of the researchers, was able to detect and subsequently analyze the X-ray light from what first appeared to be two shell-like nebulae or clouds. His research suggested that there was a more dynamic process in hypernovas than in supernovas, leading to their distinction being made. This discovery prompted a further investigation from NASA, and now they are being studied intensely by astronomers in order to gain a more robust understanding of the life cycle of a star. If a hypernova were to happen in close proximity to Earth, it could and likely would emit enough energy to destroy not only our planet, but the entirety of our solar system. And while this is extremely unlikely, what is a lot more likely is for a gamma ray burst from another solar system to damage or destroy the Earth. 
Now, there would undoubtedly be a lot of factors at play here. After all, not only would the GRB have to be aimed directly at Earth, but it must be sufficiently strong enough and close enough to have an impact on our planet. Regardless, if all the factors are present and the stars align, it is possible that the end of the world as we know it would not be due to the explosion of our sun, but from the GRB of a sun-like star millions of light years away. Due to the sheer size of a hypernova's explosion, they tend to not only destroy all nearby planets, but also generate a massive black hole. These black holes, which are made up of twin energetic jets surrounded by an accretion disk, occur instantaneously. Since these black holes are areas where the gravitational pull is so strong that nothing can escape from them, the black hole that emerges from a hypernova is typically more destructive than the explosion itself. While we know that novas are strong, the sheer power of them is probably even more significant than you could possibly conceptualize. According to Daniel Wang, an astronomer at Northwestern University, quote, hypernovae are possibly the most powerful explosions in our universe since the Big Bang, unquote. And the math certainly backs this up. After all, in 2016, a group of astronomers discovered that a supernova explosion could easily shine 570 billion times brighter than the sun, with their calculations indicating that hypernovas would be even stronger. For reference, that would be the equivalent energy output of 10 trillion trillion billion megabombs. But what their research didn't indicate was precisely what could cause an explosion large enough to result in the creation of a hypernova. Even though the exact figure aren't known, I think it's pretty safe to say a hypernova is going to knock any fireworks show out of the park. It is theorized that hypernovas are slowly sterilizing life forms throughout the cosmos and slowing down evolution on other planets. That's because the sheer strength of their blast, which primarily comes from the gamma rays, can easily decimate life on nearby planets. In particular, a supernova would have to be about 33 light years away from an Earth-like planet in order to cause significant side effects to terrestrial life. Now this is primarily because gamma rays can quickly deplete the upper atmosphere of an ozone layer, making the surface vulnerable to ultraviolet solar and cosmic radiation. In a theoretical scenario involving the planet Earth, this would severely damage phytoplankton and reef communities, endangering most of the world's marine life. There's also a good chance that gamma rays could damage satellites and telephone wires, putting the world into a technological blackout. Regardless, as astronomers continue to study hypernovas, their potential to affect the planet's surface will be better understood. As we've previously mentioned, gamma ray bursts and hypernovas basically go hand in hand. But what we didn't say is that hypernovas first appeared as a hypothesis for the existence of gamma ray bursts. You see, GRBs were first discovered on US military VELA satellites in the 1960s, and these satellites were able to determine that these rays are the result of bigger explosions than anything they had ever observed before. Now this evidence was first presented at Princeton University by Bodon Pakzinski, and while astronomers did not immediately make the connection between GRBs and hypernovas due to them realizing that GRBs tend to appear close to large star forming regions, they were eventually able to put two and two together. On a less cataclysmic note, thanks for watching Super Freaky Science and don't forget to subscribe.